This is CTV's W5. Here is Sandy Ronaldo. Welcome to W5. While the medical community's response to the swine flu virus has been controversial, there can be no doubt that the threat to public health has been taken seriously. Well, the same can't be said for another disease, this one caused by tick bites. Now, in a country like ours with vast stretches of wilderness, you might think that an illness that can be caught in the outdoors would be a priority for doctors to diagnose. Instead, this tiny microbe is frequently missed. Patients' complaints dismissed as the medical system seems unable to deal with a disease that comes literally out of the wild. It is called Lyme disease. Thousands of Canadians who are afflicted are often told that there's nothing wrong with them, that they're delusional or psychotic. Here is Paula Todd. It's a perfect fall weekend in Victoria, B.C. Like many around here, 16-year-old Nicole Bottles is ferrying across the Juan de Fuca Strait for a couple of days in Seattle. But Nicole isn't on a pleasure trip. Why did we have to leave Canada to go to see a doctor in the United States? Because they know what they're doing, I guess. And those in Canada definitely don't. <laughs> Nicole's symptoms are bizarre. The most troubling, she can't remember anything for longer than a few minutes. So who am I? Oh, you're asking me? I have no idea. You have no idea who I am? Don't well, I expect you with those guys. Those guys are a W-5 crew who've been with her all day. But every time we leave the room, she forgets we ever met. If I told you that we spent a large part of today together, would you know that? No, but it wouldn't surprise me. Your servant servant is your servant, madam. A couple of years ago, Nicole's memory was so strong, she could play a lead in Shakespeare's Twelfth Night. By my youth, I have one heart. But it wasn't long after returning from that theater camp in the woods that Nicole's health took a nosedive. It's painful remembering how much I forget, I guess. Like, I can tell a lot of time has passed, but obviously there's nothing to fill that space. Give me a sense of how you can tell time has passed. Well, I've grown. I can tell that just by sitting, gain weight, it's the wrong season. I'm wearing new clothes, different styles. How do you react to that? Well, thank goodness I'm such a relaxed person, but it's sort of like a little mental freak out. A freak out for Nicole, but for her mom, Chris Powell, unending heartbreak. Watching her talented daughter's memory disappear and her health decline. I remember every minute, every blackout, every moment of pain you had. And then when you go to the doctors, they're supposed to help you, and they won't help you. What does that feel like? Oh, it makes me so angry. And it's not just her memory loss that Canadian doctors can't explain. Nicole has a host of other symptoms, too. I have breathing problems, and that was probably the first thing that started. Swelling sometimes. The worst symptoms are probably the ones you can't see, which are the pain everywhere. In the autumn of 2007, her parents took her to a local doctor. The GP was stumped, sent her to a specialist, the first of many. Pretty much every doctor in Canada that I've been to was very unhelpful. Probably created a bigger problem because they just kept shipping me to different doctors and specialists. With no answers from the doctors, Chris started searching on her own. She found an online checklist of symptoms of Lyme disease. Nicole had three quarters of them. Yet none of Nicole's doctors would even test her for it. Frustrated, Chris sent a sample of Nicole's blood to an American lab, where it tested positive for Lyme disease. So Chris took Nicole to the U.S. for treatment. She was one of the, the sickest young women I've ever seen. Although Dr. Stephen Harris treats many Lyme patients, he was shocked at Nicole's condition. She uh, was brought in in a wheelchair, uh, unconscious, 
very terrified, screaming oftentimes. She was drenched in sweat. Harris recommended intensive antibiotic therapy to wipe out the Lyme bacteria in her system. But to get it, Nicole stayed in the U.S. for eight months. Chris and her husband Dave sold the family home to pay for it all. We have medical bills of about $90,000. The IV antibiotics are $1,100 a month. There's pain meds, there's sleep meds, there's thyroid medicine, uh, doctor's visits. Enormous expense and strange symptoms. That's what can happen when Lyme disease isn't diagnosed and treated early. You get the Lyme bacteria from a tick bite. The first symptom is often a rash. But if the bacteria move out of your skin and into your bloodstream, it's bad news. Um, and now it's hopping the freight train to you know, anywhere you want to go in the body, in the brain, in the joints, in the lungs, in the liver. University of Calgary researcher George Chaconis has studied the bacteria that causes Lyme for 10 years. This organism is like a strange visitor from another planet. The bacteria's secret weapon is the corkscrew shape. It can actually burrow through tissue. And just when your immune system figures out how to fight it, Lyme simply changes its coat. It's in a perpetual masquerade party, and each time you can now start recognizing it, it puts on a new disguise and escapes your immune system yet once again. The symptoms you get depend on where the bacteria winds up. If it gets into the joints, you can end up with arthritis. If it gets into the heart, you can get carditis. When it gets into the brain and causes a wide variety of neurological problems, some of which look like MS or ALS. With so many confusing symptoms that look like so many other diseases, Canadian doctors often miss Lyme. In fact, every year, little more than 100 Canadians are diagnosed with Lyme. While in the U.S., in the states that border Canada, that number is closer to 15,000 a year. There's a saying in medicine, if you hear hoofbeats, think horses, not zebras. Meaning, look for the common disease, not the exotic one. The idea that Lyme in Canada is a medical zebra means that many doctors here won't even consider it a possibility. Even worse, when confronted with symptoms that don't make sense to them, many are likely to turn to what they think is the next likely scenario. Their patient is crazy. I was warned by another friend of mine that the longer you go without a diagnosis, the more likely they are to say it's got to be psychiatric. In fact, that's exactly what happened to Janet and Felix Sperling's son, Ed. They investigated dozens of different things, like Parkinson's and MS, Huntington's, but then there were all the psychiatric diagnoses, including Tourette's, OCD, and autism. It was the fall of 2004 when Ed, a healthy teenager, came down with what seemed like the flu. Until his symptoms grew more and more bizarre, he started to twitch, and he lost the ability to read and tell time. Come on, Ed. Most frightening of all, Ed's brain locked up. Ed. Often in the middle of doing something as simple as pulling a sled. Ed. We basically quit counting at 40 doctors uh, that uh, had in some way pronounced an opinion on what was happening with Ed. With no apparent medical explanation, his doctors hatched a new theory. What was making Ed so sick was his mother. Somehow it's a mental illness and it's a Munchausen by proxy. Munchausen syndrome by proxy is a rare mental illness in which a parent injures or poisons their own child to get attention. Suddenly, the Sperlings found themselves not only coping with a profoundly sick teenager, but suspected by his doctors of causing his illness. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Maybe there's some social dysfunction in the family. Maybe we had beaten the child and given him brain damage or something. All the while, the Sperlings kept researching, looking for the cause of Ed's symptoms on their own. We were just frantic. Our son was getting closer and closer to death. The Sperlings did have one advantage. Okay. 
years of scientific training. Their specialty? Insects and ticks.